from Austin, Texas, it's The Cube, covering Pure Storage Accelerate 2019. Brought to you by Pure Storage. Welcome to theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage, covering Pure Accelerate 2019. Lisa Martin with Dave Vellante in Austin, Texas this year. Pleased to welcome a couple of guests to the program. Please meet Charlie Boyle, VP and GM of DGX Systems at NVIDIA. Hey Charlie. Welcome. Welcome Hi. back to theCUBE. We've been you. on a Thank long time ago. And we have Brian Schwartz, VP of Product Management and Development at Pure. Brian, welcome. Thanks for having me. So here we are, day one of the event, lots of news this morning. Pure is just about to celebrate its 10th anniversary, a lot of innovation in 10 years. NVIDIA partnership's about two-ish, two and a half years old or so. Uh, Brian, let's start with you. Give us a little bit of an overview about where Pure and NVIDIA are, and then let's dig into this news about the AI data hub. Cool. Yeah, it's, um, it's been a good partnership for a couple years now, and it really was born out of uh, work with mutual customers. You know, uh, we brought out the Flashblade product. Um, obviously, NVIDIA was in the market with DGXs for AI, and we really started to see overlap in a bunch of initial deployments. And we really realized that there was a lot of wisdom to be gained of some of these early AI deployments, of capturing some of that knowledge and wisdom uh, from those early practitioners, and being able to share it with the, with the wider community. So that's really kind of where the partnership was born. Uh, going for a couple years now, we've got a couple chapters behind us and many more in the future. Um, and obviously the AI Data Hub is the, the piece that we really talked about at this year's Accelerate. Yeah, Aries about been in the market for what, about a year and a half or so? Almost two years Almost now. Almost two years, yeah. all right. Tell us a little bit about the adoption, what, yep. what customers are able to do with this AI-ready infrastructure. Yeah, and you know, as pointed out, you know, the reason we started you know, the, the partnership was our early customers that were buying DGX products from us and they were buying pure storage, both leaders in high performance, and as they were trying to put them together, they were like, you know, what, you know, how should we do this? What's the optimal settings? They'd been using storage for years, AI was kind of new to them, and they needed that recipe, so that's, you know, the early customer experiences turned into Airy, the solution, and you know, the whole point of it is to simplify AI. You know, AI sounds kind of scary to a lot of folks, and the data scientists really just need to be productive. They don't care about infrastructure, but IT has to support this, so IT was very familiar with pure storage, they'd use them for years for high performance data, and as they brought in the NVIDIA compute to work with that, you know, having a solution that we both supported was super important to the IT practitioners, because you know, they knew it worked, they knew we both supported it, we stood behind it, and they could get up and running in you know, a matter of days or a week versus six to nine months if they built it themselves. When you look at um, companies that you talk to, customers, Let's, let's, let's narrow it down to those that have data scientists, at least one data scientist, and you ask them where they are in their maturity model. Kind of, if one is planning, you know, two is early, three is they got multiple use cases, and four is they're enterprise wide. How do you see the landscape? Uh, are you seeing pretty aggressive adoption uh, in those, as I couched it, or is it still yeah. early? I mean, so, you know, every customer's at a different point, so there's definitely a lot of people that are still early, but, We've seen a lot of production use cases. Yeah. You know, everyone talks about self-driving cars, but that's, you know, th there's a lot behind that. But you know, real world use cases say medical's got a ton. You know, we've got partner companies that you know, are looking at you know, reconstruction of MRIs and CT scans, cutting the scan time down by 75%. You know, that's real patient outcome. You know, we've got industrial inspection, we're in Texas. You know, people fly drones around and have AI models that are built in their data center on the drones and the field operators get to reprogram the drones based on what they see and what is happening real time and then it retrains every night. So depending on the industry really depends on where people are in their maturity curve. Um, but you know, really our message out to the enterprises are you know, start now. You know, whether you've got one data scientist, you've got some community data scientists, there's no reason to wait on AI because there's a use case that will work somewhere in your enterprise. So, so what are the key considerations to getting started? What, what would you say? Um, so one thing I would say is look, any, um, to your stages of maturity, any good investment is done through some creation of business value, right? And an understanding of kind of what problem you're trying to solve and making sure it's a compelling problem is an important one. And some industries are farther along. Like, you know, one of the ones that most everybody's familiar with is the tech industry itself. Every recommendation engine you've probably ever seen on the internet is backed by some form of AI behind it because they want it to be super fast and 
you know, customized to you as a user. So I think uh, understanding the, uh, the business value creation problem is a, is a really important step of it. And many people go through an early stage of experimentation, data modeling, really kind of, I'll say a prototyping stage, before they go into a mass production use case. It's a very classic IT adoption curve. Um, just to add a comment to the earlier kind of trend is, it's a mega trend. Yes, not everybody is doing it in massive wide scale production today. There are some industries that are farther ahead. If you look forward over the next 15 to 20 years, there's a massive amount of AI coming. And it's a, it is a new form of computing, the GPU driven computing. And the whole point about ARI is getting the ingredients right to have this new set of infrastructure, have storage, network, compute, and the software stack all kind of packaged together to make it easier to adopt, to allow people to adopt it faster. Because some industries are far along and others are still in the earlier stages. Right, so how do you help for those customers and industries that aren't self-driving cars or the drones that you talked about, where we, the use case, we all understand it and are excited about it, but for other customers in different industries, how do you help them even understand the AI pipeline, and where do they start? Yeah. I'm sure that varies by yeah, customer, it, but it, give me some it favorite It does vary a, a lot, but the, you know, the, the key point is, you know, start an AI project that you have a desired outcome from. Not everything's going to be successful, but you know, AI projects aren't something that, you, you know, it's not a six month IT project or you know, a big you know, CRM refresh. It's something that you, know, you could take one of our classes that we have, we do a lot of end user customer training with our Deep Learning Institute. You can take a half day class and actually do a deep learning project that day. And so okay. you know, a lot of it is understanding your data um, you know, and that's where Pure and the, the Data Hub comes in. Understanding the data that you have and then formulating a question like, what could I do if I knew this thing? Because that's all about AI and deep learning. It's coming up with insights that aren't natural when you just stare at the data. You know, how can the system understand what you want and then what are the things that you didn't expect to find that AI is showing you about your data and that's really you know, a lot of where the business value comes in. How do you know more about your customer? How do you help that customer better? You know, AI can unlock things that you, know, you may not have pondered yourself. Yeah, the, the other thing, I'm, I'm a huge fan of analogies when you're trying to describe a new concept to people, and there's a good analogy about AI data pipelines that predates AI around data warehousing. Like, there's been an industry around extract, transform, and load ETL systems for a very long period of time. It's a very common thing for many, many people in the IT industry. And I do think there's, when you think about a pipeline, an AI pipeline, there's an analogy there, which you have data coming in, ingress data, you're cleansing it, you're cleaning it, you're essentially trying to get some value out of it. Um, how you do that in AI is quite a bit different because it's GPUs and you are looking you know, for turning unstructured data into more structured data. It's a little different than data warehousing traditionally was running reports. But there's a big analogy I think to be used about a pipeline that is familiar to people as a way to understand the new concept. So uh, that's good, I like the pipeline concept. One of the, one of the counters to that would be that you know, when you think about ETL, it's a complicated process, enterprise data warehouses, yep. they were cumbersome. Do you feel like automation uh, in the AI pipeline, when we look back 10 years from now, will have maybe better things to say than we do about EDW and ETL? Yeah. <laughs> and, and I think you know, one of the things that we've seen, you know, obviously you know, we've done a ton of work in you know, traditional AI, but we've also done a lot in accelerated machine learning, you know, because that's a little closer to your traditional data analytics. And you know, one of the bi biggest kind of aha moments that you know, I've seen customers in the past year or so is just, how quickly by using GPU computing they can actually look at their data, do something useful with it, and then move on to the next thing. So you know, that rapid experimentation is all you know, what AI is about. It's not a, AI is not a one and done thing. And lots of people think, oh, I have to have a recommender engine and then I'm done. No, you have to keep retraining it you know, day in and day out so that it gets better. And that's before you had accelerated you know, AI pipelines, before you had accelerated data pipelines, that we've been doing with GPUs, it just took too long, so people didn't run those experiments. Now we're seeing people exploring more, trying different things, because when your experiment takes 10 minutes, two minutes, versus two days or 10 days, 
you can try out, you know, your cycle time shorter, businesses can do more, and sure, you're going to discard a lot of results, but you're going to find those hidden gems that weren't possible before because you just didn't have the time to do and it. And isn't a key operationalizing it as well? I mean, again, one of the challenges with the analogy that you gave on, on EDW is, fine, reporting, you could operationalize it for reporting, and, but the use cases weren't as rich and robust, yeah. and, and I feel as though machine intelligence is, I mean, you're not, you're not going to help but run into it. It's going to be part of your everyday life. Your thoughts yeah, I mean, that. it's definitely part of you know, our everyday lives. You know, when you talk about you know, consu you know, consumer applications of everything, we all use AI every day, you just don't know it. It's, right. you know, it's you know, the voice recognition system, getting your answer right the first time. You know, there's huge investments in natural language speech right now, you know, to the point that you can ask your phone a question, it's going through, searching the web for you, getting the right answer, combining that answer, reading it back to you, and giving you the web page all in less than a second. You know, before, you know, that'd be like, you talk to an IVR system, wait, then you go to an operator. You know, now people are getting, you know, such a better user experience out of AI-backed systems that, you know, over the next few years, I think, you know, end users will start preferring to deal with those base systems, you know, rather than waiting online for a human, because it'll just get it right, it'll get you the answer you need, and you're done. You save time, the company save time, and you've got a better outcome. So there's some, definitely some barriers to adoption. Skills is one obvious one. The other, and I wonder if, if Pure and NVIDIA have, have you know, attacked this problem, I'm sure you have, but I'd like some color on it, is traditional companies, which a lot of your customers, their data is in pockets, it's not at the core. You look at the AI leaders, you know, the big five. Data, they're data companies, it's at the core. They're applying yep. machine intelligence to that data. How has this modern storage that we heard about this morning affected that ab customers' abilities to really put data at their core? You know, it's, um, it's, a, it's a great question, Dave, and I think one of the real opportunities, particularly with Flash, is to consolidate data into a smaller number of larger, you know, kind of islands of data. Because um, that's where you can really drive the insights. And historically, in a disk-driven world, you would never try to consolidate your data because there was too many bad performance implications of trying to do that. So people had all these pockets, and even if you could, you probably wouldn't actually want to put the data on the same system at the same time. The difference with Flash is there's so much performance at the, at the core of it, at the foundation of it. So the concept of having a very large scale system like the 150 blade system we, we announced this morning, it is a way to put a lot of data together and be able to access it. And yeah. to Charlie's point, a lot of people, they're doing uh, constant experiment, experimentation and modeling of the data. You don't know the, the, how the data is going to be consumed and you need a very fast, kind of wide platform to do that, which is why it's been a good fit for us to work together. Yeah. Right? Now, follow up on that. Data, by its very nature, however, Brian, is distributed. And what you heard this morning is, you're attacking that problem through you know, an API framework that you don't care where it is, cloud, on-prem, hybrid, edge, yep. at some point in time. Your thoughts on that? Well, and again, um, the data to be used for AI, I wouldn't say it's going to be every single piece of data inside an organization is going to be put into the AI pipeline. In a lot of cases, you can break it down again to what is the problem I'm trying to solve the business value and what is the type of data that's going to be the best fit for it. There are a lot of common patterns for consumption in AI, uh, speech recognition, image recognition, places where you have a lot of unstructured data, or it's unstructured to a computer. It's not unstructured to you. When you look at a picture, you see a lot of things in it that a computer can't see, right? Because you recognize what the patterns are. And the whole point about AI is it's going to help us get structure out of these unstructured data sets so the computer can recognize more things, you know, the speech and emotions that, that we as humans just take for granted. It's about having computers being able to process and respond to that in a way that they're not really capable of doing today. Hot dog, not a hot dog. Yeah. <laughs> Silicon Valley fans. It's the fans. street light. Which one of these is not a street light so yes. you prove you're not a bot? I want to ask you about distributed environments. You know, customers have so much choice for everything these days. On-prem, hosted, SaaS, public cloud. What are some of the trends that you're seeing? I always thought that to really be able to extract a tremendous amount of value from data and to uh, deliver AI from it, you needed the cloud because you needed massive volumes of data. Yep. But Pure's legacy of on-prem. What are some of the things that you're seeing there and how is NVIDIA and Pure coming together to help customers wherever this data is to really drive value, business value yeah. from these workloads? I, I, I'll have two yeah. quick comments and then yeah. I'll turn it over to Charlie. So one is, 
uh, we get asked this question a lot, like where should I run my AI? The first thing I always tell people is, where's your data gravity? Moving, these data sets are very large, tens of terabytes, hundreds of terabytes, petabytes of data. Moving very large sets of data is actually still a, a, a hard challenge today. Right. So running your AI where your data is being generated is a good first principle. And for a lot of folks, they still have a lot of on-premise data. That's where their systems are. They're generating these systems or it's a consolidation point from the edge or other, other opportunities to run it there. So if that's where your data is, run your AI there. The second thing is about uh, giving people flexibility. We've both made pretty big investments in the world of uh, you know, containerized software applications, uh, those things are things that can run on-prem or in the cloud. So trying to use a, a consistent set of infrastructure and software and tooling that allows people to migrate and change over time I think is an important strategy, not only for us, but also for the, uh, the end users. It gives them yeah. flexibility. So ideally, on-prem versus cloud implementations shouldn't be, that, shouldn't be different. It'd be great yeah. if they'd be identical, but are they today? So I mean, the, at the lowest level, there's always technical differences, but at the layers that customers are using it, we run one software stack no matter where you're running. So if it's on you know, one of our you know, combined ARI systems, whether it's in a cloud provider, it's the same NVIDIA software stack you know, from our lowest end consumer grade GPUs to the big 350 pound DGX2 you see back there. You know, we've got one software stack that runs everywhere and you know, to the one that Ryan was making, you know, it's really run AI where your data is and while a lot of people, you know, if you are a cloud native company, if you started that way, I'm going to tell you to run on the cloud all day long, but most enterprises, their, you know, some of their most valuable data is still sitting on premise. They've got decades of customer experience. They've got decades of product information. That's all running in systems on prem. You know, when you look at speech, speech is the biggest thing. You know, they've got, you know, years of call center data, that's all sitting in some offline records, what am I going to do with that? That stuff's not in the cloud, and so you want to move the processing to that because it's impossible to move that data somewhere else and transform it, because you're only going to actually use a small fraction of that data to produce your model, but at the same time, you don't want to spend a year moving that data somewhere to process it, you know, back the truck up, put some DGXs in front of it, and you're good to go. Someone's going to beat you to finding those insights, right? So there is no time. Yeah. So, you have another question? Or I, have, I have a last question, so you go ahead. So in, in video, you got to be Switzerland in this game. So I'm yeah. not going to ask you this question, but Brian, I will ask you, why, why it was pure different, I know you were first, you raced out, you got the press release out first, but now that you've been in the market for a while, what are Pure's you know, competitive differentiators? You know, there's, there's really two I would net it out for Flashblade on why we think it's a great fit for an AI, an AI use case. Um, one is the flexibility of the performance. We call it multi-dimensional performance. Um, small files, large files, metadata intensive workloads, Flashblade can do them all. It's a, it's a ground up design, it's super flexible on performance. Uh, and, but also, more importantly, I would argue simplicity is, is the real hallmark of who we are. It's part of the modern data experience that we were talking about this morning. Um, you can think about these systems, they are miniaturized supercomputers. And yes, you could always build a supercomputer. People have been doing it for decades. You use PhDs to do it, and look, most people don't want to have people focused on that level of infrastructure. So we've tried to give incredible kind of capabilities in a really simple to consume platform. Uh, I joke with people, we have storage PhDs, like literally people have PhDs for storage, so customers don't have to. Yeah. Hey Charlie, feel free to chime in on your favorite child if you want. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, it, you know, a, a lot of it comes you know, from our customers. That's how we first started with Pure, is our joint customer saying, we need this stuff to work really fast. You know, they're making a massive investment with us in compute, and so if you're going to run those systems at 100%, you need storage that can feed them. You know, Pure was our first in there, they're our longest partner you know, in, in this space, and it's really our joint customers that put us together. And, you know, and to some extent, yes, we are Switzerland, you know, we, we love all of our partners, but you know, we do incredible work with these guys you know, all up and down the stack, and, you know, and that's the point, to make it simple. You know, if the customer has data, we want it to make, be as simple as possible for them to run AI, whether it's you know, with my stuff, with our cloud stuff, you know, it, with our, all of our partners, but you know, having that deep level of integration and having some of the same shared beliefs to just make stuff simple so people can actually get value out of the data, have IT get out of the way so data scientists can just get their work done, you know, that's what's really powerful about the partnership. And I imagine, I know we're out of time, but I imagine to be able to do this at the accelerated pace, accelerated? I'm going to say pun intended, yep. it wasn't, but um, cultural fit has to be pretty aligned. We know Pure's culture is bold. 
Last question, Brian, as we bring it home here. Talk to us about how the cultural cultures of Pure and NVIDIA are stars aligning to be able to enable how quickly you guys are developing together. Yeah, you know, we, we mentioned the simplicity piece a bit. The other piece that I think has been a really strong cultural fit between the companies is just the sheer desire to innovate and yep. you know, change the world to be a better place. You know, our, our, our hallmark, our mission is you know, make, the, make the world a better place with data, and it really fits with the level of innovation that obviously NVIDIA does. So, like two Silicon Valley companies with wicked smart folks, you know, yep. trying to make the world a better place, it's, it's really been a good partnership. Yeah, wow. no, I'd, I'd echo that, and that's just, you know, the rate of innovation in AI changes monthly, so you know, if, if you're going to be you know, a good partner to your customers, you've got to change just as fast, so our partnership has been great in that space. Awesome, next time we're out of time, but next time come back and talk to a customer, really want to understand and kind of dig into some of the great things that they're extracting from you guys. So, Charlie, Brian, thank you for joining Dave and me on theCUBE this afternoon. Thanks. Thanks. Nice. Thanks. For Dave Vellante, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE, y'all, from Pure Accelerate in Austin, Texas.